And when we leave, Allah is saying those that aim for the highest, they want to leave a legacy. They want to leave something after they're gone. And that legacy consists of two parts. وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِّمَّنْ دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولهم بعد uh, so we recited the last section of Surah Al-Furqan and it is uh, one of the very few places in the Quran, Surah Al-Mu'minun is another example, where Allah lists a long list of characteristics and then says these are the characteristics of the highest levels. So in Surah Al-Mu'minun, Allah says these are the people that will enter Firdaus. That's the first page of Surah Al-Mu'minun. And in Surah Al-Furqan, Allah Azza wa Jalla says, "Ulaika yujdoon al ghurfata bima sabaru." These people will be given the ghurfa. The ghurfa are the VIP suites, the highest levels of Jannah. So both of these lists are important for us to go over, to examine our own lives against these lists. And much can be said, and it is worthy of a much longer topic. But today I wanted to concentrate on uh, the last sentence or the last verse in this description. There's over a dozen, like 13 specific things that are mentioned. And the last of them is, وَالَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ Those who say, رَبَّنَا هَبْلَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَّاتِنَا قُرَّةَ أَعْيُنٍ وَجْعَلْنَا الْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامًا This is the last characteristic of the people who will enter the ghuraf. If you look at this long list, it has all types of things, beginning with akhlaq those that are modest and walking on this earth with humility and mercy, hawna. And it has tahajjud in it. And it has dua to be saved from jahannam. And it has giving charity constantly. And it has avoiding the major sins. And it has social etiquettes, not interacting with foolish people. Marru kirama, they walk by with dignity when there's the riffraff, when there's things going on. And they're listening to good advice and they don't fall blind to that. So all of this is about your akhlaq, your rituals, your social customs. And then the last thing that is said is what? Those that say, Oh our Lord, give us from our spouses and our children that which will be a comfort for our eyes and make us an imam for the muttaqeen. This is the last thing that is mentioned. Now, why is this the last thing that is mentioned? And what does this dua mean? That's will be our short khatara for today. The reason why this is mentioned at the end, everything that has preceded it, if you look at the list, deals with you. Everything deals with you and your akhlaq, you and your rituals, you and your tahajjud, you and your manners, you and your listening to khutab and durus. But then every one of us will leave this world. And when we leave, Allah is saying those that aim for the highest, they want to leave a legacy. They want to leave something after they're gone. And that legacy consists of two parts. Number one, family. And number two, your community. What have you done with them? What impact have you caused? And that's why this dua occurs at the end of that long list. Because once we die, as our Prophet wasallam said, when the son of Adam dies, all of his deeds are cut off except for three. Number one is sadaqa jariyah. Number two, knowledge. Number three, children. This is this dua summarized. They say, Rabbana hablana min azwajina wa dhurriyatina qurrata a'yun. Give us a spouse and progeny that is going to bring happiness to our soul. Now, when will the righteous be happy? When their families are themselves righteous, when their families have good manners and akhlaq, and when their families have established themselves as also role models. So when your children have deen and dunya, when your children have excelled in this world and in the religion, you will be happy. When they're demonstrating that they have iman and taqwa and Quran, when they're demonstrating that they have successful careers, good families themselves, you look at them, you will be happy. That is qurratu a'yun. 
And as we're all aware, the believer doesn't just make dua and then do nothing. Dua is the prerequisite of the action. Oh Allah, bless me with good income. Then what do you do? You find a job. You work hard. You make dua, but then you do and put in the effort. So when the mu'min, the muttaqi is saying, Oh Allah, I want righteous children. What is he going to do? Nothing? No. His whole life is going to be dedicated. My family has my priority. I have to make sure my progeny, my children, my spouse, when I leave this world, they are upon a manner that I will be happy. I'm content to see their successful accomplishments. They are good people. Their iman, their taqwa, their careers, they are established. So the believer will strive and prioritize his own family. As Allah says in the Quran, the worst losers are those who lose themselves and their families. They neither took care of themselves or their families. The believer is not like that. The believer is the opposite. The believer is the best winner. So what's he going to do? He's going to begin with dua and then follow it up in action. Make sure that his family, his spouse, his children are qurrata ayun. And the Arabic word qurrata ayun it basically means your eyes are not going to move because they're so happy at what they say, right? So, qarra means to remain. And so, qurra ta'ayun, technically it means, of course it translates as the coolness of the eyes, but technically it means, imagine you watching the sunset, right? It's so beautiful, you're just mesmerized. You're not going to turn right and left and somebody has an iPhone there and somebody's, you know, pet dog is moving there. You're looking at the sunset on the beach. MashaAllah, Tabarakallah. This is Qurrata Ayun. It's so beautiful, you don't need to look anywhere else, right? So metaphorically, it then means it makes you happy. That's what Qurrata Ayun means here. So Qurrata Ayun. And then, وَجَعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ imama, And make us the imams of the muttaqins. What dua is this? Are you asking Allah Azza wa Jal to take over, mashallah, Imam Nadim's job? <laughs> you want to get rid of him? And you want to take over Imam, Imam Saab's job? Where is he? Is he here? Or, where? or is that the dua? Every dua of Allah, I want to be the Imam of the Masjid? Is that what it means? Not at all. Not at all. Has nothing to do with this dua. وَجَعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ imama Means, make us a role model for the righteous of your servants. Your muttaqeen, O oh Allah, they should look to us. And they should look at somebody and say, Oh, I wish I had the generosity of that person. I wish I had the taqwa of that person. I wish I had the kindness of that person. This is not about being famous. It is not about being the imam of the salah. The imam here does not mean the imam of salah. It means role model. And role model not on Facebook or Twitter or on YouTube. Role model of the elite, of the muttaqeen. Role model of the people who have taqwa and piety. They should be inspired by you. And this is a dua not for fame, but for ikhlas. Because the only way the muttaqeen are going to be inspired by you is if you have become the imam of the muttaqeen. You have done something with your own, with Allah's blessings, but in your own life of your taqwa and of your khushu' and of your generosity and of all of the good that you do that people say to their children hey why don't you look at so and so they're giving private talks they say mashallah that that brother he did and they mean it and they love that brother because he is a person who brings about change causes an impact spreads the iman and the khair that we all every one of us there are people they inspire us there are people we look up to in our hearts and we have mashallah that brother that is what we ask allah for not for fame not for the imam position but that our piety is so pure and so good our ikhlas is so high that the people of ikhlas find inspiration from us and this is a private matter we don't even know who we impact we don't even need to know Allah is monitoring we're not asking that I should know the names of those who are inspired by me what we're asking oh Allah the people of piety make me so pious that I can be a role model for them and so, when you're aiming for that, that's your dua to Allah. How will that impact your lifestyle? How will you be thinking? What good and khair will you be spreading that you want to be the imam of the muttaqeen? And then once you leave this world, now your legacy will remain. Your dhurriya, your 
righteous children will be making dua for you and the people you impacted, their, your legacy with them will go on after you die. And that is why the last thing that is mentioned, because it shall continue after your life, the last thing that is mentioned. And subhanAllah, look at the great scholars of our ummah. Look at Imam al-Bukhari and Ibn Taymiyyah and Imam Abu Hanifa. Hundreds of years, thousands of years. And to this day, we admire them and we're inspired by them. That is what you call a legacy. That's what you call وَجَعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامًا Imam al-Shafi'i Imam Abu Hanifa Imam so-and-so Imam al-Nawawi That's what you call the real Imam Their legacies live on far beyond their time and their era because inshaAllah their ikhlas and their dedication and their efforts that's what we're striving for. وَجَعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامًا So let us memorize this dua and let us continually make this dua. وَالَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا هَبْ لَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَّاتِنَا قُرَّةَ أَعْيُنٍ وَجَعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامًا InshaAllah we'll continue next week. Zakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.